Hey guys, Dr. Rebecca Warren here. Um, I'm gonna take a second for uh, people to start joining. I do wanna apologize, I scheduled a Facebook Live and I'm not using the live I scheduled. So let me go ahead and turn that off in case people are looking for this live video. I'm just waiting for people to join us this evening before I start answering some really awesome questions about thyroid health. So, Let's go ahead. Uh, all right, let's make sure we're deleting this. Hello, hello, guys. Oh, it's working. I don't know anything about technology. <laughs> all right, awesome. Hey, guys. Hey, Anna. Um, good to see you guys. So glad you're tuning in. I want to make sure you guys are sharing this video with your friends family members, because um, I'm going to be talking about a really, uh, just a lot of really great information. Um, throughout the week, I was asking people to post questions that they had in regards to thyroid health, and people responded. They responded with a lot of questions. So I'm really excited to dive in and answer those questions. Um, so again, make sure you guys are ready with your questions. If anything pops up, I'm here, I can see uh, your questions. I'll make sure that I am answering it live. I wanna make sure, does Ruth know that we're on? Oh, yes. Awesome, okay. So before we get started, all right, people are starting to join here. So before I get started in regards to the questions, um, I want you guys to know why I do what I do. The reason why I do what I do is that yes, I am a doctor, I'm a functional practitioner, I help patients in my office and clients virtually. I'm very passionate about helping people um, with their thyroid health, but the biggest reason that I'm very, very passionate about thyroid health is because I suffered with thyroid issues um, starting at 19 years old. And you guys have got to understand that 13, 14 years ago, if you felt like you weren't getting thyroid help now, today, in this day and age, if you felt like you couldn't find the right practitioner, you couldn't find the right answers when it came to thyroid health, imagine 14 years ago, at 19, nobody knew what they were doing with the thyroid, and yet they were cutting out thyroid, they were medicating it, they were radiating it, and it was a mess. So, 19 years old, um, my mom saw a lump in my neck, and she said, hey, you have got to go see your doctor, I went to the first medical doctor. He said it was strep throat, which doesn't make sense. <laughs> but I ended up going home. They checked out my neck. They did a scan. And um, I remember going up into the follow-up with my mom. And we're sitting in the doctor's office. And I remember the doctor talking. And then everything just stood still. Because the doctor said, um, you know, I'm sorry to have to tell you. But told my mom, but your daughter has cancer. And I remember thinking, how? Like, how does this happen? I'm only 19 years old. And so I had a follicular uh, carcinoma uh, encapsulated in my thyroid. Don't worry about the name. All that means is that I had a type of thyroid cancer that they felt the best thing to do is to cut out my thyroid, radiate anything that's possibly left there, and um, say you're good to go. And the reason why they say you're good to go is because they have a pill that they can give you um, Synthroid. And so what ended up happening, they rushed me into surgery, they cut out my thyroid, I had all this radiation. I remember staying in a hospital room where everything was covered in plastic, the bed, the floor, the phone, because the pill I had just taken was so toxic, it was coming out through my pores. Like I couldn't even hug my family and my friends when I went back to college after this procedure. After all that was said and done, I remember the doctor telling me, hey, you know, if there's a cancer to have, this is the good cancer, which I have heard that over and over again from different uh, thyroid patients and clients that have come to see me. There's no such thing as a good cancer, okay? The reason why they say it's good is because they can cut it out, they can radiate it, they can fry your thyroid and put you on a medication and that's it. But what ended up happening and what still influences my health to this day is that I am dependent on a medication that's trying to mimic what my body naturally does. And so for years, I suffered not feeling well, 
feeling foggy and tired and anxious. Um, I would sometimes lose weight and then I would gain weight and it didn't matter what I ate. I was eating vegan for a period of time. I was eating raw and I remember a doctor trying to tell me, um, let me explain to you what calories look like. And I was like, but I'm not eating bad. I don't know why I'm not losing weight. I don't know why I feel like this. I don't know why I'm struggling and I'm only 21 years old. And so what ended up happening, I actually got into a car accident. My brother um, referred me to a chiropractor because my neck was burning. And when I went in there is the first time I learned um, one of the biggest lessons that till this day affects how I treat my health and how I help my clients and my practice members get better. Is that the body was created to heal. Your body has not failed you. Your body is still trying to heal even if you're having thyroid issues right now, even if you're hypo or hyperthyroid. The problem is that your health has been mismanaged. That's the problem. And so what ended up happening, I ended up transforming my health. I ended up changing the way I ate. I ended up supporting my body differently. And I went through all this suffering to change it all by going back to the principle that the body's created to heal itself. So I'm passionate about it because today I had a consult with a patient and uh, she started crying in front of me because I explained to her how the thyroid works and she said, how is it that I've been going to doctors for years and no one's explained this to me? Your body has not failed you. The medical system has failed you. And so that's why I'm doing this post. That's why I want to make sure I'm answering these thyroid questions um, and here for you guys because I know what it's like to know that something is wrong and someone tell you, well, your labs look okay. Um, what do you want? So I suffered through that and now I'm helping women and men conquer their thyroid issues by getting to the cause. And so I want to say again, if you guys remember the cancer I said they diagnosed me with, the cancer they said we needed to cut out your thyroid and put you on Synthroid, that same cancer two years ago, the New York Times wrote a big expose and they had the top radiologists in the world, the top oncologists, um, the top endocrinologists in the world, and this large study determined that the diagnosis that I received at 19, I was better off keeping my thyroid than all the treatment I received. I remember reading that article two years ago and crying, thinking, oh my gosh, this article is saying that now I'm worse off because someone cut out and radiated my thyroid when it shouldn't have happened. So my purpose is I wanna be here as a resource for you guys to help you guys, but if I can stop one of you guys from getting your thyroid taken out, if I can help you guys um, get off of thyroid medication, if you're your, your thyroid can start functioning better, if you can start feeling better, if you can start living the life that God intended you to live, then this was all worth it. The work I do every single day with the thyroid patients that I sit down with, it's all worth it because you can heal. It's about getting down to the cause. So I want to start off with one of the questions that I received on Facebook. Um, one of the cr uh, questions was from Tracy. And her question was, I was under the impression um, that once your thyroid goes bad, it never gets better. And when I read that, the first thing I wanna ask is, where did you hear that junk from? <laughs> and I'm sure you probably may have heard it from a doctor, but um, guys, I am seeing uh, clients in my office getting well, feeling better, actually losing weight in a healthy way. I um, mean, they notice a difference, anxiety going away, depression going away, antibody numbers going away. And some of the largest doctors all over the United States are doing the same thing. Um, the thyroid is a regenerative tissue. Uh, and a perfect example of that is I've had patients that have told me that they will have their thyroid radiated and the doctors say all the tissue's gone and tissue will grow back. That is amazing. Like that should tell you that your body wants to heal. This is a principle I want you to understand. Above everything, uh, above everything I say this evening is that your body is not trying to kill you. Think about that. Everything that your body does is to keep you alive. Why would your body wanna kill you? Everything it does is to keep you alive. But what happens is 
our bodies start to go into survival mode. I explain this to all of my clients is that when your body feels like it's under stress, chemical, um, physical, emotional stress, not just work stress, it can be toxins and medications and vaccines uh, to negativity, to broken relationships, to nerve issues and nerve damage, all of these stressors make your body act and feel like it's under attack, like there's lions coming after it, like it needs to survive. And in survival mode, things like digestion and blood pressure and heart um, and thyroid, it's not important to survive. And it's perfect short term, but long term is when your body starts to break down. So you have to understand that your body is not healing because it has not been treated the right way and we haven't gotten down to the cause, okay? So how do we get down to the cause? I got a lot of questions from people asking, what are the right labs? I got a lot of questions actually from people saying, I feel like my thyroid is off, but my doctor says it's not. That, I mean, that's probably the top thing I hear from people that come to see me or the consults that I do um, virtually. It's, I know something's wrong but my doctor says um, nothing's wrong. And so, uh, let's see, what is the question right here? Uh, okay, so, yeah, I have been feeling Mary, uh, K, blood test is normal, sleepy all the time, um, nodules everywhere, but I've been told that I don't have a problem. Okay, guys, the reason why you're being told that you do not have a problem is because you are seeing someone who is not an expert in your thyroid health. Just because someone has an MD or an endocrinologist does not mean they know what they're talking about. I said it, okay? Because I experienced it and I still experience it now when I'm hel um, helping my clients. The problem is twofold. Number one, a lot of doctors are not pulling the right labs. They're just not pulling the right things. Number two, if they're pulling the right things, um, they're not interpreting correctly, okay? So get ready for this. If you guys wanna write this down, I will give you guys an opportunity. If you want this information, if you want notes um, that I'm talking about, make sure to private message me your email and I will send you a breakdown of these labs that you need to order in order to really get down to the cause of your thyroid issues, okay? So make sure you are privately messaging me on our Doctors Warren page and I will send you those labs, okay? Do we have a question there? Yeah, is there, is there a like diet to help with hypothyroidism? I will tell you about that diet here in a second because I did get a lot of questions of that. First, I'm gonna touch on getting the right labs. Okay, so a lot of the times what I am seeing is that doctors are ordering TSH and T4 and that's it and it's not complete. So you can have a TSH and you can have a T4 that looks great. I just um, had a console my last appointment today. I was like, hey, your T4 looks amazing. Like your numbers look great. Your T3 looks crap. Now let's break it down. So thyroid stimulating hormone, it's released from the pituitary gland and it's in a way knocking on the door of your thyroid. It is saying, hey, um, your brain, is sensing, the hypothalamus is sensing that we need thyroid hormone or we need to stop making it. it. Your hypothalamus is gonna tell the body, hey, what's up? Then the pituitary is what releases TSH, so thyroid stimulating hormone. So the pituitary can release TSH and it goes to the thyroid and it says, hey thyroid, release thyroid hormones. So the fact that so many doctors are using TSH alone to determine that thyroid is healthy or not is insane because TSH is a pituitary hormone. I do check TSH levels, but that's to make sure that my patients are really, really hyper or hypo. So that's TSH. Now, the next test you need is free T4 and free T3. These are unbound hormones. This is what your body has readily available to use, unbound. 
Now, I have been seeing some doctors just testing TSH and free T4, which, hey, kudos to them for doing free T4, not just T4. But the problem with not testing free T3 is that free T4 is an inactive hormone. It is a hormone that is ready and waiting to be converted to something active. At our um, last thyroid summit we had here in Chattanooga, um, the best way I explained it is that T3 is king. In order for you to lose weight, in order for you to feel normal, to not feel depressed or anxious, um, to not have hyper or hypo symptoms, for your thyroid to be good, you need adequate numbers of free T3. In fact, you have receptors all over your body for free T3. It's needed for function all over. And that's why when your thyroid is off, it influences so many things in so many areas. Another thing, especially nowadays, I see a lot of patients that are coming in with anxiety and depression. The largest amount of receptors is in the brain for T3. It's such an, if this hormone was so important and you need it to function, to stay alive, to feel well, wouldn't you think it's important to check it? I promise you guys right now, for a majority of you that are still feeling these thyroid issues, if you go back and look at your, th uh, you know, like your lab work, I bet you you're not, you don't have those levels, those free T3 levels. So, so TSH th uh, is a good uh, free T4, free T3. The next one um, I always, always test is thyroid antibodies. There's two of them, um, thyroid globulin antibodies and TPO. What are those? In the most simplest terms, if you have high numbers of these, you have um, an autoimmune reaction. You can't get the proper diagnosis and you can't have um, the proper, you know, healing plan together if you don't know what is causing the issue. So, you need both thyroid antibodies. And I see people are joining us and coming in and out. I want to let you guys know, if you want a breakdown of these labs, email to you. Make sure you Facebook message me your email address and I'll make sure my office manager sends you an email with these labs that you need to be pulling to find out really truly how healthy your thyroid is. Because if you're having thyroid symptoms and your doctor says your lab looks okay and you don't feel okay, I can promise you that you do not have the right labs or they have not been interpreted correctly. So TSH, free T4, free T3, thyroid antibodies. So what does antibodies mean? It means that when these numbers are high, your body is attacking the thyroid. And I think one of the biggest things that frustrates me about people that come in and have been on Synthroid or even Armour long term is that if the body is attacking itself, what good is it for you to just be taking a hormone and that's it? Because guess what? An autoimmune reaction in the thyroid is just in the thyroid, but you can have autoimmune reactions throughout your body. You can have it on your skin as rashes and psoriasis. You can have it um, systemically like lupus. Autoimmune can show up in many different ways. So just taking a thyroid hormone when you have antibodies present means that you'll be taking that medication for the rest of your life and you'll never get better. So antibody numbers. When I look at antibody numbers, when uh, my clients bring in their labs um, or when we pull labs on them, I never see, usually like the upper limit for one is nine, the other one will be 34, and I never see something like 40 or 12. I usually see if the upper limit is 34, I'll see 500. If the upper limit is nine, I'll see like 60. It's never a little bit, why? Because it's been there for a long time. For an autoimmune issue to arise, it's been developing. And if someone hasn't been treating it the right way, you haven't been going to the right practitioner, those numbers are gonna be high. So one really interesting thing that I want you guys to think about is why doesn't my doctor uh, pull my uh, antibody numbers if they're so important? Well, think about this. Currently, there's no drug in the market whatsoever that will bring down your thyroid antibody numbers. So, 
if a doctor pulls it and they don't know what to do with it, they can't give you anything to it. And I see that all the time. There's one patient whose antibody numbers was at, were at, was at 6,000. And the doctor was pulling the numbers each year. And it's like, oh, so he's just looking at this number. So you need to work on bringing those antibody numbers down. So recap, TSH, free T4, free T3, uh, thyroid antibodies, TPO and thyroglobulin antibody. Um, the next one is reverse T3. This one's like one that no one pulls, but this is another instance where your TSH can look normal, your T4 can look normal, and even uh, your T3 can look normal, but you can still feel hypo. So, hey, doc, all these numbers, I you know, I have most of those labs, they still look bad. Reverse T3 is an important lab to get done because it's a natural way of helping us under times of stress. And so what reverse T3 does is T4 in the liver will convert to T3. T3 is king. It's going to make you feel great. Under really high times of stress, um, or when your body feels like it's under stress, remember chemical, emotional, uh, physical stressors, your body will try to conserve energy. So it's saying, hey, if a line's coming after me, I don't wanna make free T3, I want to conserve energy because I need energy to survive. And instead, it'll make reverse T3. And so what reverse T3 looks like, when you have high numbers of reverse T3, It'll go around acting like T3, but it will not let you feel good like T3 would make you feel. So it's like this. This is how I explain it to my um, clients is, have you ever gotten a key and you put it in the keyhole and it fits, but it won't turn because it's the wrong key, but it fit. That's exactly what reverse T3 does. It'll fit and connect with the cell, but it's not gonna make you feel well. So again, your free T4, your TSH, your free T3 will look good, but reverse T3 high is gonna make you still feel hypo. So those are the top thyroid hormones. Do we have a question? I think here we have yes, a question. Says, Deborah says, I am 54 and I've been on meds since I've been 21 years old. Can I ever get off meds and get my thyroid, I guess it's thyroid working again? Where are you located? Okay, so we are located in Chattanooga, Tennessee, if you guys are just tuning in. Um, but even if we're, our clinic is in Chattanooga, Tennessee, but we do do phone and virtual consults. So if that's something you guys need help with, um, you can message us here on our Facebook page and let us know that you need help. And we can set up a consult with you guys. And um, this is what I know, is that I know that the body is created to heal. I know that the body is fearfully and wonderfully made and science will spend um, the rest of eternity trying to understand how our amazing bodies work. And that being said, I don't think there's boundaries on what's possible. You know, being long term on a medication, you do become dependent on that medication. Your thyroid has been dependent on that medication for so long. Um, but the best thing is, I'll tell you this, your thyroid issue is causing other health issues. The same thing that's causing your thyroid to be dysfunctional is causing other things to be dysfunctional. So whether you know you can come off that medication or not, getting well and getting your body well is going to have unbelievable amounts of results, okay? Just great for your health, great for you, how you're living your life. So. Just start treating your body like it can come off of that medication. We, I don't prescribe medication. Um, I actually work together with a fantastic medical doctor here um, that works with us. But whether you can or cannot, you have to heal your body because if the issue is still there that caused you to be dependent on this medication, it will show up in different ways. I say it all the time. I see my uh, thyroid people that, you know, had thyroid issues for a really long time. They'll have gallbladder issues. They've had liver, a history of liver issues. They'll have gut issues like IBS or Crohn's or um, really gassy, those types of things, skin issues. So all of that, it's about getting down to the cause, healing your body and allowing your body to do what it was created to do. 
I go ahead and tell you, you can get well from these issues that cause the thyroid problem to begin with. So let's go back to some other questions that I received here. Um, so, okay, so I'm feeling sick, but the lads look okay. She, you only had, um, there's someone that showed me your labs. I don't know if you're watching right now. You sent me a picture of your labs on Facebook and you only had TSH and free T4. Now I hope you understand why just uh, TSH and free T4 is not accurate. You need TSH, free T4, free T3, reverse T3, thyroid antibodies, TPO, and thyroglobulin antibodies. Those are just the thyroid related ones, guys. I check vitamin D3, I check iron, I check iodine. Um, depending on what's going on, I look at toxicity levels. So the one thing you have to understand with your thyroid is that yes, there's different causes, but once you can pinpoint, hey, this is what caused it, you can heal from it, all right? So. And then uh, Deborah says, how do you heal your body? I eat only organic and purified water. Okay. And then Kylie said, I yes. think that was me. <laughs> <laughs> Kylie, I wasn't yeah. going to call you out. Come on now. Um, so the thing is, with healing the thyroid, it's this is the thing. So I, I'm a doctor of chiropractic. And someone asked, is chiropractic natural? And I said, no, it's not natural. You think chiropractors were there when we were creating? No, it's not. But we live in an unnatural world. We live exposed to toxins like never before. Our food is changing. Um, we are exposed to toxins in our beauty products. We are exposed to stress like, like never before. Like not just with work, not just with our family, but we're exposed to stress in the news and on Facebook and social media. And we're exposed to so many unnatural things. And so... It used to be that you could just eat well and drink water and be okay. Um, no, now it has to be very specific to what you have going on so that your body can heal. Um, and so I'm gonna share some more things. We're gonna get into the nutrition aspect here. I wanna make sure that I'm answering everyone's uh, questions. Again, if you guys want a breakdown of the labs, go ahead and go to Facebook. Our Facebook hook, Doctors Warren, and send me your email, and I'll make sure our office manager sends you a breakdown of the labs so you can start that first step in getting in the right direction for your thyroid health, okay? Uh, next question, let's see here. So Amanda said, benefits versus risks of iodine supplementation, specifically Lugol's iodine. Okay, so I iodine is amazing. It's needed for so many different areas in your body. It is absolute, absolutely necessary for thyroid health. And so the reason why iodine is so important um, for thyroid health is twofold. Number one, iodine is needed to make T4 and T3. So you need iodine um, to be healthy for your hormone levels. Um, and the second reason why is because iodine acts like a detoxifying agent to the thyroid. Um, to a lot of chemicals that we're exposed to in our water and processed in wheat products. So a lot of doctors don't check it because they believe that here in America we have iodized salt, so we're getting enough of it. But studies have shown that in the last 50 years, um, salt consumption has gone down 60%, meaning we're not getting exposed to iodine. We're not eating seafood and wild-caught fish and kelp and seaweed and those types of things. So we're actually becoming very deficient in iodine. Too much iodine is a problem. So a lot of people will read an article um, online and they'll just go get an iodine supplement. If you were getting iodine naturally, you would not be just getting iodine by itself. You would be getting it mixed with other nutrients. Why do I say that? The problem with iodine is when you're taking it on its own. Lugo's iodine is an amazing product, but it's a potent product. So if you're drinking or if you're taking in a lot of Lugol's iodine on its own and you haven't been getting tested, um, you can take too much of it eventually, eventually. And what ends up happening is too much iodine causes free radicals. What does that mean? It just means that it creates in, uh, something in your body that attacks your thyroid. That's what happens. So that's where a lot of the controversy comes with iodine, but 
That's why it's important to take iodine with selenium. Selenium, guys, so I had someone ask about herbal support. Selenium is not herbal. I will tell you about herbal support though. But um, selenium is a potent antioxidant uh, for glutathione. So it, it's, it's amazing for your immune system, for fighting cancer, for fighting disease, all of that. But selenium will help with the free radicals of iodine. Selenium will actually, if you remember I said that there's no medication um, on the market that will bring down your antibody levels, selenium will um, over time in a certain amount depending on what you need. So it's really important, number one, to know what your iodine level is and number two, to supplement wisely. And so getting tested for that. I saw the question popped up here. Um, as far as toxin goes, I use non-toxic products on my skin, makeup, etc. I'll be in contact. Absolutely. I'm so excited. Listen, I'm so glad that you're getting rid of um, makeup and beauty products. I truly believe, especially, I want to say women, but it's actually men and women. Um, one of the biggest issues we're having not only with thyroid, but cancer is chemicals and toxins that act like xenoestrogens. They mimic estrogen, they cause your hormones to go up, and we're not meant to have high levels of estrogen. So yeah, it's really good to pro you know process out those toxic products. It's been a journey for me. If you guys are tuning in, this is your first time really starting to change your health, take it one step at a time. It's been a 12 year journey, um, but that's why I hold my clients' hands. Um, I walk with them. Um, and allow them to understand that, hey, everyone does Whole30. I mean, ugh, hello, we all know someone who's done Whole30. Well, what happened at Whole31 or Whole50? Like, you got to make sure that the changes that you're making and you're implementing are going to be long-term so that things look better and different a year and five years from now. So, iodine is good, done the right way. Getting tested, um, the best way to test for iodine in the blood is not serum, it's not blood iodine. It's actually through the urine, through a whole day. That's the best way to know your saturation levels. And once you know your saturation levels, hey, it can take up to a year, studies show, to get the right amount of iodine, okay? So that was a question I got there. Herbal support. So I have different supplements I get my um, thyroid clients on, but herbal support, so in regards to herbs, one of my favorite supplements that we have in the office that we use um, almost like a 90% of our patients, but especially with our thyroid clients, um, is Stress RX. So Stress RX is a blend of adaptogenic herbs. What are adaptogenic herbs? Things like ashwagandha and cordyceps. Guys, these herbs are, um, they work to help your stress, your HPA axis, your hypothalamus pituitary axis. Um, what does that mean? If you remember, I wasn't sure if all of you guys have been here at the beginning, I said that the hypothalamus communicates with the rest of your body about what's going on in your body and how much thyroid hormones you need. So hypothalamus communicates to the pituitary, the pituitary is what releases thyroid stimulating hormone. So all that to say that adaptogenic herbs are great at helping you handle stressors at helping balance your response to things that are happening around you. So, yep, that was one question that we had. Ali said herbal support. I am 110% there for um, adaptogenic herbs. Also, a lot of people that have thyroid issues have cortisol issues. Why? Because your thyroid will be off for so long and then your cortisols are affected. Your sex hormones like estrogen and progesterone will eventually be affected as well. So, Things like adaptogenic herbs will help with cortisol levels, guys. So again, if you want a breakdown of labs to start getting um, as your first step to getting well, make sure you message me your email on Drs. Warren, and I'll we'll make sure our office manager gets that to you guys. All right, let's go to the next question I received here. Um, so Kate said that uh, she has nodules. I've been getting a lot more people with nodules. I actually have quite a few men that I'm helping that have nodules on their thyroid. Um, and all that's being done is pretty much monitoring those nodules. If there are, no, if there are nodules, um, a lot tend to be hyperthyroid. 
you've got to understand that there's two different things that are happening there, either a deficiency or toxicity, okay? There's a deficiency or there's toxicity. And if you're not addressing either one of those, they're just going to cut out your thyroid. So be aware that those nodules are there as a red flag, as a check engine light, like, hey, this isn't functioning Why? Well. It's not doing that just because, it's doing that because there's toxicity, fluoride, chlorine, or bromine, fluoride and chlorine, water you drink at restaurants, at home, you shower in bromines in wheat and processed products, we're exposed to it um, in unnatural amounts. Those attack your thyroid, that, with low iodine just creates a really bad storm for your thyroid. So um, nodules can be helped. Um, I have a patient, that uh, a client actually that I helped, a virtual client that I helped from Ohio, had nodules and worked on getting those sh um, down in size and it's been great. Okay, so my, oh, do we have a yeah, question we got a here? question. Let's see, Marissa was asking about Birth control and thyroid. What's the, what's the oh, This is good. Good question, Marissa. Yeah. Okay. So the one thing you have to understand, and I explained this to one of our clients that was um, there today, is that there's this triangle when it comes to hormones. And so you have your thyroid, um, you have your sex hormones, and you have your cortisol levels. And they all work interchangeably. And when one of those are off, and especially long-term, um, you're gonna affect this triangle. So thyroid's off, affect cortisol. Cortisol off is gonna affect a birth control. Uh, birth control. It's gonna affect your sex hormones. It's all gonna affect each other. I can do a whole Facebook Live on birth control alone, um, especially estrogen-based birth control. What that's doing, it's, a, it's creating a very, uh, like I said at the beginning, survival mode, sympathetic state. When you're taking these unnatural forms of estrogen, they're gonna mimic estrogen in your body. They're gonna raise your estrogen levels, which is gonna affect your progesterone levels, which is gonna affect your testosterone levels. It's all unnatural. It's all um, not how it should be. When you're having these high levels of estrogen, it's gonna influence the production of thyroid hormones. It just is. It's not only gonna influence the production of thyroid hormones, causing your body to respond to this bad form of estrogen within your body, but then it's gonna put a burden on your cortisol levels. Your cortisol is gonna go up day after day after day, and then when your body can't do anything more about it because the it's not changing, you're still taking this birth control, the cortisol will drop. So now you're gonna see a dip in your hormone, thyroid hormone levels, you're gonna see a dip in your cortisol levels, and you're gonna see a ridiculously high amount of estrogen in your body. Um, so that, not only that, but birth control can cause um, a lot of serious issues like hormone-based cancers, it can cause um, a lot of issues in regards to, I have, and I can share a story because we're gonna make a video of her who had a lot of hormone issues and had a lot of this bad estrogen. So we had to detox all this estrogen out and everything started to normalize. So yeah, it's gonna affect that triangle of hormones and it's just gonna bring all of them down. So that was a really great question. Thank you, Marissa. All right, so I have, I have thyroid issues and I feel tired and sleepy all the time. What can I do? It's because you need T3 for all of your cells in order to make energy and you just don't have it. So the first step you gotta do, um, I, don't, I didn't put the name here, but the first thing you gotta do if you're feeling uh, lethargic and you're feeling this way is you've gotta get the right labs and if you need my help, message me, I can help you. Now, let's get into a really common question I've gotten about the best nutrition plan um, to support the thyroid. Okay, best nutrition plan to support the thyroid. If you've been following our page, I have been doing keto, but I do modified keto. I actually do diet variation, and I do diet variation not only for myself, I do it for my clients, and we see some fantastic results, and it's doable, and it's easy. What does diet variation mean? It means that we are not meant to have 24 access hours access to food all day long, eating the same junk all day long. We're just not. We're meant for diversity. You know, um, I just shared this with a client today that we're 
so similar to our ancestors. The only thing that has dramatically changed is our environment. What does that mean? Our ancestors lived at a time where they were very active and they hunt and they gathered. And what happened is sometimes they had an abundance of food. Sometimes they didn't and they had a fast and sometimes they had a hunt for their food and they would eat in season. And this diversity in regards to food and how we eat is how um, you're gonna thrive the best. So what does that mean? I do do keto. I do uh, about 50 grams of keto um, a day. I get myself into ketosis. I become fat adapted. And then I cycle in carbs. That's right. I get to eat carbs every five, six days. And, um, and then I get back into ketosis. And so we do need carbs. Um, you know, long-term ketosis is just not, I don't see that good for anyone, especially women. So if you have thyroid issues and you've been doing keto like strict or you've been doing keto um, and you've been testing for a month plus, um, I don't recommend that long-term. You need certain, you know, a certain amount of good, healthy carbs for your thyroid and for your sex hormones. So the best way to eat is gonna be a high-fat diet high fat, rich in minerals, a diet rich of minerals, supplementing with it, or eating a lot of wild caught fish and kelp and seaweed, chlorophyll and spirulina, um, those types of things. Uh, those sea minerals are gonna be really, really great for the thyroid. So um, a lot of high fat, a lot of high fat, avocado, olive oil, um, getting rid of all of that. I did a Facebook Live yesterday talking about gluten. If you have thyroid issues, there's no if, ands, or buts. Gluten has to come out. It just does. Um, research has shown that the gluten molecule is very similar to the thyroid. What does that mean? It means that when you're eating gluten, you have digestive issues, whether you have symptoms or not. If you have Hashimoto's or hypothyroid, you probably have leaky or per uh, uh, permeability in the gut. And when you eat gluten, it breaks it down um, and it doesn't absorb it correctly, it doesn't break it down correctly, it leaks into the blood and your body recognizes it, attacks it, but that constant bombardment of this gluten um, protein that's not fully digested causes your body to start attacking your thyroid. I mean, the research is there for that. So if you have thyroid issues, that is something that you absolutely have to eliminate is gluten. There's no if, ands, or but. I would also eliminate dairy. Um, dairy especially just it's just not something naturally you should be eating and so um, I talked with someone today because she was like do I have to get rid of this forever and do I have to <laughs> I don't know if she's watching she's like do I have to give up my half a half in coffee listen the reason why you're eliminating these foods that can cause sensitivities in your gut the reason why you're eliminating it is because you want to decrease your inflammatory reaction things like Hashimoto's is an autoimmune inflamed reaction of your immune system. That's just what it is. It's just over the top, um, uh, just reaction. And so when you're eating foods like gluten and dairy and a lot of processed foods and bad fats, you're consistently always causing this hyperactive reaction. So let's say you eat, you're like, but doc, I don't feel like I have issues with gluten. But if you have a thyroid issue, you 110% have an issue with gluten because you're having an autoimmune reaction. If you have psoriasis, if you have rash, if you have dry skin, if you break out, you have a gluten issue. So a lot of good high fat, quality fat, a modified keto with 50 grams of carbs and then cycling through once you know you become fat adapted and then supplementing um, with some good quality iodine, selenium the right way and getting tested the right way um, and adaptogenic herbs. So everyone is different and so it's according to what your body needs and how you feel and how you're responding. So yeah, I have people that will eat a certain way for a month and something happens, they hit a plateau or they're in a really stressful spot and we'll change it up. All right, let's do things this way. And it's okay. It's just responding to your body and that's just the right way of doing things. So let's see. I want to make sure I answered all the questions you guys have here. I feel down all the time. So a lot of the, I got a lot of the same questions. 
best nutrition plan to support the thyroid again so this is also what i always love so i do modified keto my whole entire family and before i did a modified keto we all did paleo so when i go into cycling in carbs i'm eating paleo that's always a great way to eat one thing i want to say too about keto because i've had people ask me this is like they'll be on keto and they're like how do i give up dairy if that's a majority of keto it's not like <laughs> you don't need milk you don't need heavy cream you need butter you need olive oil you need avocado those are your staples you can do goat um, goat is a different type of protein than cow so you can do that but you don't need dairy to do keto um, I you think mean like a, the cheese and the, and the milk yeah like, not like actually eating goat <laughs> I mean you can eat goat if you want to Dr. Nathan's over here guys you gotta stay away um, I meant yes goat milk and goat cheese so um, there's that okay so I've been dealing with osteoporosis and RA for a few years I was so tired and I slept I had a medical crisis five weeks ago, ended up in the hospital with what showed up as stuff, but then blood cultures came back negative. After five days in the hospital, I went home and still exhausted. Dang, doc ran and mine was 2.3. I'm scheduled to see an immunologist next week. Not sure what that level means. I'll go ahead and tell you this. Because you've been diagnosed with RA, um, you, we know you have an autoimmune reaction. Like, you, we know you have an autoimmune issue. And so I said this about 10 minutes ago, if you have an autoimmune issue and you're not healing from the autoimmune issue, you're not just going to have that. <laughs> so if you have RA, RA, it's just not going to stop there. If your body is attacking itself, again, your body's never trying to kill you. If it's attacking itself, it's telling you that something is wrong. And so RA has been associated with severe leaky gut, severe gut permeability, um, severe overactive immune system. I've had people um, that have come in and their nervous system is a mess. And so I just want to give you hope um, because it sounds like you're just kind of going through the ringer um, with this. And so your autoimmune reaction needs to be healed. Um, you can see an immunologist, you can see different people that are expertise in this, but all they're going to tell you is that, yeah, you're having an autoimmune reaction. Yes, your immune system is overactive. Take a medication. So um, if you have any more specific questions, if you'd like me to help you, just shoot me a message. I'd love to talk to you some more um, about what they find and, and how we can help you with that. Um, but uh, autoimmune reaction is going to be related 100% to gut. It's gonna be related 100% to the nervous system. It's gonna be related to what you're putting inside of your body. And the one thing I tell my thyroid clients is this. Guys, you gotta have grace with your body. You gotta know that uh, you know, my clients, yeah, I have Rachel two months in and her antibody numbers are coming down and you know, Tina's feeling great and all of this and I can say their name. They let me. We're going to do testimonials for them. But you've got to understand to uh, really see the true changes that your body needs. you got to give your body time. And so minimum with these thyroid disorders or autoimmune disorders is six months to, to make sure that things are changing and um, regenerating and healing the right way um, and having lasting changes so give your body grace and know that you can get well if you're not getting well it's because you haven't um, treated things the right way or you've been mismanaged so that's really really important thing there um, okay let's see what should uh, I think we got some I had some messages here so as I'm pulling up the messages because I'm gonna try to talk while I'm pulling up these messages people privately messaged me while I was talking um, the one thing I do want you guys to understand, I do want to touch a base, uh, okay, um, I do want to touch base on toxicity a little bit, um, because I do see this a lot more happening. If you remember, I said iodine is a good way to detox your thyroid, and the reason why is because iodine is a halide, and it is just like bromine and chlorine and fluoride. And those three chemicals are not good for your body. They actually go in and destroy your thyroid. And so when you have these exposures, and when you have exposures to things like vaccines and things in our um, beauty products and plastic and medications, it is an overburden for uh, the liver. And really unique, I don't know what research says about it, but I can tell you that the people that I work with if they have thyroid issue, they've had liver issues. 
and so they either have a sluggish uh, liver or they've been diagnosed with liver issue in the back and you gotta understand the liver is amazing it's again a huge detox organ it synthesizes so many different things and you know or like uh, vitamin d3 your hormone vitamin d3 it is amazing but it's worked overtime because we live in an unnatural world. So safely detoxing your liver. In our office, we do true cellular detox that gets down to the cellular level um, of healing and it supports all your detox organs in your body. But I do want you to understand that that can be an issue. And so I've shared a wide range of possibilities that could cause thyroid issues. But again, when you have the right labs, when you have the right practitioner that is walking alongside you and is able to interpret things and to hear you out, you can figure out, hey, this is where it's at. Is it toxicity? Hey, this is where it's at. Is it because my hypothalamus, my brain is not communicating well down my spinal cord, up through my nose, nerves to every tissue, cell, and organ? My nervous system is damaged. Is it because I'm deficient in nutrients like iodine and minerals? Um, is it because I'm having conversion issues, which will be the final thing that I touch on there. So once you know what path to take and you start going down that path, I know for a fact that you will get well. So the thyroid will heal and you will feel a difference. Mick, um, said, Mick said, I see your beautiful and loving care for people over you. Oh, thank you. Oh, thank you, Mick. I am, I am, I am very passionate about it I love to serve but I also if I can be completely honest I love to be able to um, get people out of a system that tells them that they're not gonna get better and then get them better <laughs> like that's amazing I like to see people um, that feel like they're not living their potential to see people that are not living their God-given potential and help them get there and my mentor um, says that in your pain is your passion. And for me, I suffered for years with thyroid issues, asking God why it had to happen to me. Um, I remember one of our first dates with Dr. Nathan, I sat in the car and he, I think he asked me a question like, what's the scar in your neck? Or like, what happened to you? And I'm like, oh, I just don't know. And like, I just couldn't control my emotion. Like, y'all, I could not talk about this publicly without crying because I felt like my body failed me. And now I understand that through that pain, God can use it for something big. And so God can use it to help others. And um, I pour that into my patients and my clients is that, listen, through this, there's going to be growth, and you're going to learn so much about yourself. You're going to learn to appreciate your body and learn to appreciate um, what God can do through this journey, and you'll get there. So thank you. Thank you, Mick. Um, I'm glad I could share that with you guys. And so let me see. I thought there was one more question here. I was thinking of one that you worked with a, a client today who literally just let you know about mold toxicity oh, and how yeah. that's affecting Yeah. Oh, okay. she actually just asked a question. I'll touch on oh, that yeah. in just okay. a sec okay. second. So Lexi, so why don't practitioners check for all the different T3, T4, free T3, and iodine levels if they're all connected? Um, dogma, outdated information. That is a really great question. I wish I could be like, ask them face-to-face, -face, like, why don't you do this? Like, it's just wrong. Um, it's because... They're practicing on old information because in the 80s and 90s and even 2000s when I got my thyroid taken out, that was the gold standard. The gold standard was TSH. They didn't fully understand it. And so what's happening right now at unprecedented numbers is that they're cutting out, they're medicating, and they're radiating thyroids um, without fully understanding how they function. And that's the problem. And so... One thing is that New England Journal of Medicine, they did this large study, and they looked at how long it took for clinical, re uh, for research, for peer-reviewed research to make it into clinical practice. In other words, I mean, it was a big expose. It was a big thing. It was all over the news. So how long, once research says this is the right way to do things, how long does it take for it to get into the doctor's office and doctors start practicing it? 17 years. 17 years. Um, you could go on suffering with thyroid issues before hopefully, you know, the doctor you're seeing says, hey, I need to change this up. 
I'm not okay with that. And you shouldn't be okay with that either. So, um, it's just, it's just not, it's just outdated information. But, um, this is the right information. So free T3, free T4 and all of that. And yeah, we actually have had quite a few patients and, uh, mentioned mold, um, black mold and not just cause sometimes you'll get mold tested and they'll say, uh, oh, it's not bad. Uh, but don't just go off of that. Uh, doing deeper research, you can understand that just because they don't think it's bad, it can become opportunistic and it can turn into something bad. We have multiple patients that have been exposed to mold and it attacks your immune system and it brings it down. So toxins and things like mold and heavy metals. Oh, this is one. No one asked me this, but I'm going to tell you, um, uh, fillings, uh, amalgam fillings in your teeth, leaching out just from chewing food and drinking hot things. I have three clients right now that have eight, um, in their mouth and they all presenting with the same symptoms. So these are all different things that can, uh, you know, contribute to that. So I want you guys to start thinking about, Hey, yeah, that, that, that makes sense. Like that's me or yeah, I do have feelings or yeah, I've been exposed to mold or like, yeah, I'm having nodules. Maybe I am deficient in something. I want you guys to start asking those questions. And so the final thing I'm going to say again, guys, if you want my help, make sure to message us at Drs. Warren. If you'd like this information sent to you, a breakdown of what labs to take, make sure you uh, message us with your email. And the last thing I want to say is the importance of conversion. Um, when it comes to thyroid hormones. I have a lot of people that are on Synthroid and they say, hey, I still feel like crap, but I've been taking Synthroid for X amount of time. Um, the reason why for that is because um, Synthroid is just T4. And I always hear about um, doctors not wanting to prescribe naturally desiccated thyroid hormones and they say it's because it's um, unreliable or it varies. And the truth is Synthroid has had more lot recalls than something like Armour Thyroid. So that again is outdated information. But the reason why you possibly still don't feel well on T4 is because your body still has to work on converting that to T3. So if you're having gut issues, if you're having liver issues, if you're deficient in certain minerals, um, and things in your body, you're not going to properly convert T4 to T3. So what good is it just flooding your body with T4 if your body's overburdened and it cannot convert it? So yes, it is possible to be on it and to still feel bad. That's why a lot of people will talk to their doctor about naturally desiccated thyroid hormone because those type of medications come with T4 and T3 to help supply those hormones in your body. Um, so, so what... I saw okay. Tina, Tina was giving some encouragement, which is awesome. She does amazing and works really hard on her health. So I she said, really just cool. yeah. a word of encouragement for those listening. I was told for years my symptoms in Synthroid were just what my life was going to look like. Then I met the doctor's warrant and has literally changed my life. So thankful. Oh, that's awesome. Very Thank cool. you, Tina. Right. I really appreciate it. I'm proud of you because this is the thing, guys. It's going to take work and it's going to take commitment um, to following those recommendations and doing the changes that you need to do to start feeling well. But I'll tell you what, you will get there. Absolutely. Yes. And then you had another question about uh, what are some of the symptoms <laughs> of issues with amalgams? Okay. Um, ooh, a lot. <laughs> I mean, it can be a wide range of things. We can have thyroid issues, dysfunctional thyroid, actually hyperthyroid, um, but really, truly, the biggest issue is going to be brain. Alzheimer's, dementia, um, rage, anxiety. It can cause depression just because those metals are going to be going through the blood-brain barrier to the brain and affecting um, that area. And so if you go on YouTube and look up uh, like mercury fillings, like vapor, tooth. the smoking tooth. Yeah. Go on YouTube, look up the smoking tooth you're gonna see all they do is take a filling and they rub it down and they record the vapors that become released from it 
and you can see what happens with those fillings when you've been eating or you've been drinking things. So also the study that you told me about the other day, just to mention it, you, there's a study that showed, I don't know. Can everyone hear him? I don't know. Maybe there's a study that showed that mercury, the amount of mercury in a mother's mouth was directly related to the amount of mercury yeah. in the baby's brain. Oh yeah. So. Yeah. Mercury in the, in the mother's mouth directly related to the amount of mercury found in a baby's brain. And so this is the thing that's outdated information as well. I'm not a dentist, but I'll tell you what, I'm going to find all the best research to get myself my patients and my clients well. So I'll probably know more than your dentist as well. So <laughs> that's, that's just what happens when you've had health issues and you know, hey, I got to get well, you'll go wherever, however you got to get there to make sure you get well. And so um, if you guys have any more questions, we're going to be wrapping up here. I want to make sure I answered everything, which I think I did. Let me make sure I'm, my list because people sent me stuff. Um, benefits, risk, and all of that. Anyways, I know this is a lot of information. I just wanted to give it all to you guys. Um, and any questions that you have and anything I said, feel free, is that everything? Okay, yeah. Feel free to message me. I will message you back. And if you send me your email, I will email you those labs that you should get um, to make sure that your thyroid is healthy. Again, when it comes to your thyroid, you are not cursed to Synthroid for the rest of your life. You've got to um, get down to the cause uh, if you don't feel well. This is, this is what I, um, my client today started crying because I had to tell her, I said, listen, the way they used to practice medicine is how I practice today. I don't prescribe medicine, but it used to be you listened to the patient, number one. You listened to what they were saying. And I told her, I said, listen, I don't care what your labs are. All I know is that you live in your body and if you're telling me that you're working hard but you feel frustrated and depressed, you can't lose weight, you're in pain, then I know something is wrong. So you know something is wrong, don't stop there. Um, don't stay there, you gotta get down to the cause and get well. Um, can we come to you to have the labs run? Can you guys come to me to have the labs run? Absolutely. I write rec sheets and um, we'll give them to you and you can actually go to LabCorp, they'll pull the blood and they'll deliver the results to me. And I actually deliver it to you in a way, I am an advocate that you should always have all of your labs, all of your medical records with you, always, so you know what's going on with your health. So. We always give you a copy of those. And so, yeah, we can do that for you. Um, just let me know. We can set something up with our office manager. But just know that you know something is wrong and you can get well. You just have to find the right person to get you there. I'm there, here for you guys. Any questions, make sure to message me. And locally, Chattanooga, every Saturday morning from 10 to 11 a.m. live, Talk 102.3 FM, the wellness hour with myself and Dr. Nathan. Do you want to show your face? Because you're like right there. Uh, hey, there he is. <laughs> yeah. uh, anyway, so. Sure you can close up. Yeah. Every Saturday, 10 to 11, we're live on Facebook. We're live there. If I get a lot of questions after this, I'll make another video. Um, you guys have a wonderful night. Thank you for tuning in. God bless.